So today we're going to be making a secure REST API. Now this concept here can be applied to pretty much any API type, but I do want to add that we have quite a lot of code to go over and I want the video to be as short as possible. So I will go over the code fast. I have tried to put as many comments as possible so you can go ahead and read it. All the code as usual will be in the description. And I do also expect you guys to know Express since I'm not going to be explaining the basics of Express, but here we go. We have an express app. We import the dependencies. We set up a basic express server and we make sure that it can take JSON. This here is not necessary for this example, but this code is actually taken from my own website. So that's why this is here. But essentially it's just so you can send more data. And for a production app, this is maybe useful. But then we set up our routes. We have an authenticate route and we have a messages route. Now you can have as many routes as you want, but for this example, I just have one, which is messages. And then I have the route that will authenticate us. Then we set up the routes here and I essentially, I map them to a URL and then we just start the server. Let's go ahead and take a look at the authenticate route. Now we import JSON web tokens, which I have made a video on in the past. And we use bcrypt as well to uh, encrypt our passwords. Then we set up the router here. And then on post request, we make all of the sign in information. So the way this works is that you put in an email and a password, and that will give you a token, which will be valid for 15 minutes, which you can use to use the API. And there's three different user levels. So there is an admin, there's a viewer and an editor, but you can really change them to whatever you want for your API. This data would come normally from a database, but because I didn't want this video to be too long, I've just made it an array. Now you can see here we have an email, we have a password, which I will show you how to generate. And then we have the roles over here. Now, the way it works is that we have an admin and an editor and a viewer. So it's, it, it's a bit, um, the way this works, you could change this, but essentially just because you're an admin doesn't mean you can view. So you would need to have all three to be a full admin that can both view, edit and be an admin. So, you know, you could see this as individual um, rules and it's sort of a bad naming convention, but yeah. Um, here we find the user by the email that we put in. And down here we compare the password using bcrypt. We will then create a token with a user ID and the role. And this is our private key. This, of course, you would get from an environment variable. And this, you, of course, want it to be more secure. Then we expire in 15 minutes. The reason why we do this is let's say that you gave a token with all these permissions here, and then you went into the database and changed. So it was only a viewer and not an admin and an editor and a viewer then that token there you gave before would be valid for pretty much all time and you would not be able to change that. So this way it just makes sure that the token is only valid for 15 minutes and after 15 minutes they will need to ask for a new token where you could go ahead and change the roles or the password or the email. And then we just go ahead and send this. I do want to add that I do this here. Now, the reason why I do this is it's just something that I really like for front end application that there's this okay. And if it's not okay, it's false. If it's okay, it's true. I have that on all of my API endpoints. The messages route, I'm also going to go pretty quick over, but we import the authenticate route. We import our free roles here. Then we have a temporary list, which would normally be the database. Then we have a get request, which will get that. And you have to be a viewer. You can see the way we pass this in is that we pass in authenticate, which will make sure to authenticate the user. And if the user is valid, then it will get one of those user types here, which the viewer, editor, or admin uh, will go ahead and check. And if any of these fail, we will not get to this endpoint here. But get essentially shows the messages. Post essentially adds one. Again, this would normally be a database, but in this case, it's just a local array. I've not implemented the put. I'm sure you guys can figure out how to do that. And for the delete, we just delete it. Now let's take a look at our middlewares. This is our authenticate middleware. And all I do is I export this as a middleware. And then I go ahead and check this. This is the header. So in the header, and I will show you this guys later in Postman, this is the header you will need to set the token to. So that's the header name. And then we'll go ahead and check that token. And we just do some verification here, verify that it was us that issued that token. And then we'll go ahead and check if it is expired. And if it isn't, then we'll go ahead 
and proceed. And this is the way the different roles work. This is the admin, the editor and the viewer. This is here where you could say if it is an admin, it would also be an editor and a viewer, or you could pretty much do anything in here. You could also rename them or you can add more roles. Um, but that's essentially the way the roles work. They're very simple. Now, if we go back to our authenticate and we have our user here, and the way I got this password here is by this script here. So it's pretty simple. All this is, is the password. In my case, my password is one, two, three. So you put this in and you run this file, just stand alone. It doesn't have anything to do with the application. And that will go ahead and generate the password that is valid. But guys, that was pretty much the entire application. Let's take a look at how it works. All right, guys, so this is Postman. Now, Postman is a way for testing your API. You don't need this, but it's very useful if you want to test your API. So you can see we send a post request and what we need to provide is our email and our password. So we provide the same email as we had in here and the password. And then we go ahead and hit send. And that will give us a token, which is valid for 15 minutes. Okay. So we can then go ahead and take this into the messages and we can make a get request with this token. And then we can get all of the messages. If we don't provide this, well, we'll get an access denied token not provided. There you go. So this is what you would have to implement in your front end code, sending this token here and refreshing it every 15 minutes. We can also, of course, add messages. So the way we do that is that we make a post request instead, and then we make sure to define the body. If you want to know how to define the body in Postman, all you do is you set it to raw, and then you make sure to change this over here. But then we can go ahead and send a name and the content. Oh, we can actually see I did not refresh the token. So this is what happens when you use an old token. So all you will have to do is just go over here and uh, change that token. And there you go. Now it works. And here, there you go. We can then see the get data. Now guys, I know that I went over the code pretty fast, but I like doing short videos. You guys like watching short videos. So that is really the way it has to be if I um, have to show you these bigger projects. So if you guys want a part two of this, comment that down below and comment what you want to see. Do you guys want to see uh, me implementing user validation or do you guys want me to implement a database so we can actually store these users here? Or do you guys not want a part two of this video at all? If you have some video ideas, put them down below. I can't guarantee that I will do them, but I will add them to my list. And I know I've not been doing too many videos lately and this pop up, it's just really annoying guys. I'm not going to pay for AVG. VPN, okay, go away. I've really been seeing the channel lately, getting a lot of new subscribers and a lot of new views, and I just thought that that was so exciting. So that's really the reason why I'm making this video. I want to make a new video for all the new subscribers, which I got over the last month, which was quite a lot. We are almost, guys, at 900 subscribers, and then we're really only 100 away from the 1000 mark, which would really mean a lot to me if we could hit that 1000 mark. I know it's possible, and uh, I know you guys can make it possible, and I really, really want it to be 1000. Now, the reason why is not so much for the advertisement because I will have to have 4,000 watch hours anyways, which I don't have. But these videos, I'm making them for fun and I want as many people as possible to see them. So if you guys know anybody or that's interested in development, then please go ahead and share the video. It would really mean the world to me. And um, yeah, guys, that was everything for today. And hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully see you in the next one.